so I can remember what I want to talk about because I really wasn't sure up until just a few minutes ago because those of you that know me know it's kind of about stream of thought. So let's get comfortable because it's all about relationships. And what I'm trying to convince the, the, the marketing world, a, a, a term that I coined a little while back, ROR, return relationship, and, and what's, what's bothering me is I think that people are forgetting about true relationships. And they're using technology kind of in the opposite direction. So a lot of you guys here, maybe some of you guys are new, but if you've been around with Jeff Pulver for a long time, if you don't know, Jeff was a ham operator as a kid. So he was that kid that wasn't out playing ball with everybody. He was up in his room, scouring around the world, trying to talk to people. But what's really cool about ham radio uh, is that you're getting on there and you're twisting the knob around and you're going, you know, Jeff 242 something, and all of a sudden someone talks to you. And instead of like on Twitter or what we're doing today where you go, great, okay, next, go to the next person, you're like, oh my God, hello. And you want to build a relationship because this person's one of the few people that's on there. And now you're talking to them, and now you know somebody in Singapore. And what I see happening today is that people are using technology. The great thing about Twitter and social is that you can build these relationships at scale. But I got to tell you, probably most of you guys in this audience, you're not doing that. You're using it to scale an audience. It's like you're back on TV, and you're just trying to build an audience that you can speak to, but you're not building a relationship. So how many of you guys sit in meetings now, and you pull out your Blackberry, and everyone around the table, everyone's looking down, and nobody's really listening, and after the meeting, everyone's trying to figure out, what did we promise each other? What are we going to do? Well, what you'll see is, now here, obviously, I want you guys tweeting, because I want to get this message out, okay, but try to at least put away the Blackberries. I don't know about you guys. I sit at home, and I've got the computer open, and I got, I got an iPad. This is going to be great. I'm only going to have to carry this nice little thin thing. So now I carry the iPad and the laptop and the Blackberry. And then I've got them all open around me while I'm working. But at least then I'm home. So you don't know I'm not concentrating on you. You don't expect me to answer you immediately. That's I love when I'm interviewed via chat. It gives me time to go, hmm, what's the answer to that question? I got a little time. But when you're sitting with somebody and you can do this via social, look them in the eye. How do you build a relationship? You guys, I mean, if you go on a date or you're with just somebody new that you like, you meet Dean, you say, oh my God, this guy's a great guy. I want to get to know him. You, you don't sit there and look at everybody walking in the room and look around. You put it down, or at least you used to, and you look them in the eye and you let him know you're concentrating on him and that you're getting to know him and you're filing away a few facts about this person. Well, we're not doing that online and brands aren't doing it. I mean, how many guys, how many of you guys in this room are either from brands or work with brands and everything they do, and so they call it social. It's not social, it's traditional advertising. They're just using the social medium. They're not getting social, they're doing campaign initiatives, they're, they're doing campaigns and the minute it's over, they're done. Is there, a, is there more than maybe one or two brands in America that truly understand the blogging community? Hello, the blogging community is the most powerful form of social media we have. Forget Twitter and Facebook. They're platforms. They're, they're enablers. Bloggers are the power. They've got true relationships with their audience. They've got scat static content that lives that you can search. And what do brands do with them? They spend all this money meeting them. They desperately court them. They finish the campaign and they forget about them. They don't answer their emails. They think of them as a media company. And this is happening with all of us. I mean, most of you guys are looking at your numbers. You're looking at your cloud score. And hey, not big, have not been a big supporter of cloud, but the corporate world's starting to accept it. If they're accepting it, then you've got to start paying attention to it. But don't watch your cloud score. Understand how you meet people. Somebody tweets you, you know, retweets you, thank them. But don't let it end there. It doesn't end at the thank you. Now, granted, you get, if you get retweeted or people reach out to you many times and you're out there, and if you watch my feed, you'll see there's lots of smiles, lots of thank yous, lots of quick replies. But then it's the people that start engaging back, or then I reach out to them again, and I start building a relationship. How do you build a relationship? You communicate. You look people in the eye. You show interest in what they do. It's so easy today. But what everybody's doing, like I said, I love ham because it made people create a relationship. Pony Express, social. Okay, all this stuff is leading up to it. The other day I was at a conference and Jeff Hazlett and Gary Vaynerchuk were on the stage and somebody asked, like, do you guys think Twitter is going to survive? And you know, Gary gave the perfect answer. I don't give a... We know how we finished that sentence. I'm not going to finish it here, but that, because it doesn't matter. It's not about the platform, it's about the relationship. So how do you do that? Well, you make yourself available. Again, what I do all the time is I throw my email address out there. I want people to know that don't send me 20 DMs in a row trying to get a message across to me. Tell me you want to speak to me. Set it up. Pick up the damn phone. How many of you guys work with people? Nobody. Okay, yeah, I know. Old school. 
Okay, don't worry, I have, other, I have other tools, but this damn thing works, okay? But how many people you work with someone, you're working on an account, you're working on a deal, and you go, oh, we haven't heard back from them. Well, how'd you get, what'd you do? I emailed them. Okay, well, how many times did you email? Three times. Nobody answered you? No. What'd you do? I tweeted them. Yeah, I followed them on Facebook. Pick up the freaking phone. Call them up. Show up at their office. Meet them at an event. How many of you guys, I'll tell you, this happens to me at events all the time. You guys are all here. You're meeting all these people. This is great. You're doing what you got to do. You're not just here listening to people like me throwing out my opinions, and that's all they are is opinions. I'm not an expert. I'm not a guru. Nobody really is, especially in this space. Everyone's just trying stuff, okay? And the beauty of it is you can try it, it's, it's live, it's real time, it's minute to minute. I can get feedback in three seconds. I talk to brands, they go, well, this is our brand message and this is what we do. Well, what about your audience? What do they like? Do you know their passion points? Well, their passion points should be about sports because we're talking about sports. Maybe it's not. <laughs> Did you bother asking them? Did you throw out a few feelers? Maybe all these jocks want to hear about makeup. Talk to them about it. I, I, I got to tell you, at Elf Cosmetics, we reached out and we said, look at all this market. We started talking to our, our audience, all the women that bought from us. And you know one of the biggest complaints were? I know you're not going to believe it, but my husband steals my stuff. Okay, now, he's not, don't worry, he's not stealing the mascara, but he's stealing the cover-up. And who is it, by the way? Biggest audience of men stealing cosmetics from their wives? Firemen and cops. They're going crazy all day. They're risking their lives. They're going out drinking at night. And the next day, they've got to show up at work and co cover up those lines on their face and fix things. And what did we do? We created a kit for them, and women started buying it for their husbands. Listen to your audience. Build a relationship. And then, now, now, once they talk to you, hear them. What does hear them mean? React to them. Do something for them. Engage. Interact. There's so much opportunity out here, but most brands aren't doing it. Then there are brands that are. Great story, I'm, I'm down to four minutes, so I'm gonna try to move through this quickly. I'm on a plane on my way to South by Southwest, 2010, jet blue, stuck on the runway, three hours. About two hours in, I'm, on my, I'm whipping out the laptop, adding jet blue, asking what the hell's going on, and what do they do? Within 30 seconds, they interact with me. I'm the first guy in the plane to know we're stuck because our luggage is on the flight to New Orleans. So what's my next question? Like any of us, we don't understand the airline industry, so get it the hell off of there and put it on our plane. It's a little more complicated than that. They engaged me. They explained it to me. I'm telling people on the plane. I start messing around with them. I said, okay, well, we're all missing our parties in South By. How about some drinks? Free drinks for everybody. And they start quoting what they can do and what they can't do. But what do they do? They don't just quote me the way some brands do. They said, you know what? We want to do something for you. How about free movies? This is before they had their escalation policy. So now they gave us free movies. I go up in the air. There's no, there's no, we all know no wireless on JetBlue yet. Boo. Soon. Okay? So... I immediately tweet when I land, kudos to JetBlue, they couldn't solve my problem, but they engaged me. Now, airlines can never solve your problem. They're going to take the plane, the plane's going to take off because I'm sitting there bitching on Twitter? Of course not. But they're going to engage me in a public forum where everybody else who's paying attention can see it. I'm sitting on a, a, on a panel at the CMO conference. I'm a former, I'm a reformed CMO. I call myself a CSMO now, okay, Chief Social Marketing Officer. And I'm on a panel with Morgan Johnson, head of communications for JetBlue. And we, I don't really know him yet. I wasn't going to say to him, hey, dude, you know, I had this problem on your plane. It was three months before that. We're on the panel. We're talking about engagement issues. Banks, Jamie Punishell, who was with Citibank at the time, Morgan Johnson from JetBlue, they don't got easy questions. This isn't Target saying the bathroom's dirty or I didn't get the discount I wanted. It's hard to help these people. So Morgan starts talking about how they get engaged. And then all of a sudden, I said, you know, that's so great because when you really talk to people, even if it's a problem you can't solve, he goes, oh, my God, you're that guy. You're at Ted Rubin. You're the free drinks guy. <laughs> okay, now this happened on a plane. It's happened in a room with 100 chief marketing officers from all over the country. And this happened naturally. We didn't even know what was going to happen. I'm like, oh, my God, that was you tweeting me? Yes, because JetBlue has an escalation policy. JetBlue pays attention to everybody. JetBlue correlates it with your cloud score. JetBlue looks at who follows you. JetBlue knows what you paid for your ticket. Go try that with Virgin. Virgin Media, I mean Virgin Airlines, great airlines, great campaign and initiative-based social. They'll try anything. Porta Gale, fabulous CMO. She's doing great things. But they don't engage. They don't communicate. You tweet them, what do they do? They pull you to DM. The minute you're in DM, they pull you to email. You email them, maybe 28 hours later you'll hear from them. I got another great story, but I'm down to 128. I don't know if we can go there. So let's go on to the next thing. Just last night, Target. First Twitter party ever. It was like the, it was like the effing 
Apollo launch sequence. Oh my God, these guys wanted to travel. It was with Liz Lang. Women here in the audience, you probably know who Liz Lang is. Fabulous designer. Made, made maternity wear that, that, that makes you look beautiful, popular. Women love her. We got about 100 bloggers to come on to this Twitter party. And Target's saying, well, you, you can't answer any of the questions they pose on Twitter. Can only answer the questions that are approved that come through here. Now, little did Target understand that, dude, you think the way it's going to happen. You're going to have this thing. And what they also don't understand is people love Liz Lang. They love Target. It was all cool stuff, but they still didn't want to do it because they wanted to control the message. It's dead. You can't control it. You can guide it. You can talk about it. But you know what's happening today? All of you people, you can't be afraid to build relationships. Stop running away. Look people in the eye, and brands can't be afraid of this either because relationships are what make it valuable. It's what makes it good. You guys are going to leave here. You're going to have all these cards, and I would say 90% of you guys will not follow up. I get this all the time. Oh, I ran out of cards. Give me your card. I'll email you. I'll get you my contact info. Now, I'm a freak over this. Okay? I'm all, it's all about relationships for me. ROR, return a relationship. How do I get to know you? Maybe something can happen later. Can I do something for you? I make that call. What can I do for you today? That's what's important. You go out to dinner. Don't go out to dinner with one person when you're at a conference. Everybody you pass by, invite them. Come on. Come with us. Let's build something. So it's really important to communicate with these people. So I come home, you guys will get Facebook. You, I'll, I'll, I'm going to friend you on Facebook, and I hate that freaking word. Friend, you're not my friend. I'm just getting to know you. You guys have teenagers? Oh, I've got 2,000 friends. You don't even have one friend, because you're sitting in your room typing to all of them. Okay? Make them your real friend. I mean, I have to work to make Jeff my friend. He didn't like me when he first met me. I was way too abrasive. Okay? But you know what? I didn't give up. I call guys like Dean. I said, will you talk to Jeff? Tell him I love him. I, mean, I went to his social media jungle. I used to go to his goddamn breakfast. But I kept at it. Okay? Think of it like anybody else. You meet that guy in school, that girl, that somebody else, someone in a meeting, you're at the golf course, there's the guy who's the CEO. What do you do? You court him. Court everybody here. Take those cards. Follow up. Friend them on Facebook. And also, please, don't send me another friend request without telling me who the hell you are. Okay, and don't send me a, a, a LinkedIn thing without saying, this is what I do. Let me know. You'll notice. You friend me every time. I will never just accept it. I write back, thanks so much. Looking forward to connecting. Let's talk. What do you do? Do that for me. Twitter's different. You know, we just click on things. We follow people. But even that, if it's somebody that you, that's valuable to you, retweet them. Get their attention. Communicate with them. I think we're done. Just getting nervous. Thank you very, very much. Guys, at 10 Hey.